Okay, so you should have had time to solve these using ratio tables and find the product, and I'm going to go ahead over it. It can be used to check your work, see what you did that's similar to what I did. Maybe you did um, something differently, and maybe you need support, and if so, you can always pause the video and rewatch as needed. Okay, so 32 times 17, so 32 groups of 17. Okay, so I had to go ahead and create my own ratio table this time. Okay, and I know I'm starting with one group. Very important to me that I label. One group of 17 is 17. Okay, two groups of 17, we know we double or multiply by two. So 17 times two. Two times seven is 14. Two times one is two, plus one is three. So I get 34. Okay, now we, we know to start with the core four. One, two, four. So let's see, how could I, if two groups is 34, I'm going to do this one mentally. That means four groups would be, I'm going to double the 30 and get 60, and double the four and get eight, 68. Okay, and then 10 groups. So one, two, four, and 10. So 10 groups, I like to look at one group and say, I'm going to multiply by 10. And so do the same thing down here. And then you would do 17 times 10. And that, we can use our basic facts to help us get. 17 times 1 is 17 with a 0. So just to review, so far I've learned that 10 groups of 17 is 170. But I need to find out how many 32 groups of 17 is. So I started to analyze. And look, now this is where you might have gone different than me. The first thing I saw was this 10. And I thought, wait a minute, I bet I could make 30 groups if I just triple this or multiply it by 3. I would get what 30 groups are. So I have to also triple this or multiply by 3. And again, I use my workspace, 170 times 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 1 is 3. 4, 5. So I get 510. Okay, so I just found out that 30 groups of 17 is 510. Now I'm close. So how can I get that extra two? Well, wait a minute. If 30 groups is 510, and I need 32 groups, well, I already know what 30 is. And wait, I already know what two groups, two groups are. So 32 groups, I'm going to have to add 510 and 34, okay? So if I add 510, because that's what 30 groups is, and 34, because that's what 2 groups is, I add them up, and I get 544, okay? Then I'm kind of finished. I think my factor times factor is product. I think my product is 544, but I'm going to go ahead and check my work. So I'm going to check. 32 times 17. I'm going to use standard algorithm. You can use another strategy. That's just the one that I chose to use. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 1 is 22. It's part of my product. They put a placeholder 0. Now I can call this a 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, I've got my both of my partial products. I'm going to add them up. I get a 4. I get a 4. I get a 5. Yes! My answer matches, so that's when I can really celebrate, okay? So that is the first problem. And now really quick, same thing, we're going to go over the second problem. Now I'm going to do a little curveball, and I'm going to make my ratio table going this way. Not to be confusing, but because I want you guys to see it a different way. So we want to solve for 51 groups of 13, okay? Well, what's one and I'm going to label this. What's one group? One group of 13 is 13. Okay. What's two groups? Because I'm trying the core four. One, two, four, and ten. So how would I get two groups? Oh, well, I see now the doubles here. So whatever I did to one side. I doubled one here, so I'm going to double over here. 13 times two. I'm going to use mental math for this. Because I know 10 times 2 is 20, and 3 times 2 is 6. Guys, really, what I just did, I just want to show you really quick. I did 13 times 2, 
but I actually used partial products. I used 10 times 2 and 3 times 2. Okay, anyway, um, and I got 26. So now I'm going to double that again to get what's here. So if two groups is 26, what's four groups? I don't know. Let's see what's 26 times 2. I know I'm moving quick, but that's because this is a review. Okay? So four groups is 52. So what is 10 groups of 13? Well, wait. 10 groups of 13? I know. I could just multiply 10 times 13. 10 times 1 Oh, sorry, 13 times 1 is 13 with a 0, so I get 130, okay? So, this is where I like to rewind. I need to know what 51 groups of 13 is. So far, I know what 10 groups of 13 are. Wait a minute, what if right here I multiply by 5? That could tell me what 50 groups are. This can be big numbers. That means I have to take 130 and multiply by 5. But no worries, I can do that in my workspace. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So 50 groups is 650. So if 50 groups is 650, I need to figure out that's 50 groups. And, hey, wait, one group is 13. That's one group, because, right, that's 50 and 1. That means if I have the 50 groups and the 1 groups and I add them up, it would make, over here, 51 groups. So I have to add up these two. So 650 plus 13. 3 plus 0 is 3. 5 plus 1. So remember, we're switching to addition. 5 plus 1 is 6, and 6. So I think the product is 663. You know, even as the teacher, I'm not always confident until I check my work. Okay, so I'm going to check 51 times 13, and I hope it's this. Okay, 51 times 13. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, placeholder is 0. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 5 is 5. Add up my partial products. And the grand reveal, yes, my answers match. That means I can feel confident that I did it right. Okay, so hopefully this was a review. Now, you could have used different numbers that I used building up, so how I went from 10 to 30. You might have gone slower, and that's okay. But I want you to get in the habit of seeing how you can build these tables up and you can use these ratio tables to multiply larger numbers. Okay? Very good.